Tonight, the title of my message is Just Give Up. Just Give Up. Turn to someone next to you and say, Just Give Up. So, so tell them, Just Give Up. Tell someone, Just Give Up. Now, to counter that, we're going to open the Bible. So if you want to turn, we're going to go to Jeremiah 17, verse 5 to 8. And it says this, This is what the Lord says, Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. They are like stunted shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. They will live in the barren wilderness in an uninhabited salty land. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord. Amen. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. Come on, let's pray tonight. God, we just thank you that you are just so clearly moving in here already, Father. There has been hunger in this place and you always respond to hunger, Father. So I just pray that uh, you would speak through me, Father, tonight, what you want these people to hear. Speak through me. Speak through your Word, God. Speak through uh, what happens in our ministry, Father. Lord, I just pray that tonight would bring breakthrough in the name of Jesus. We would see breakthrough through your Word and through your Spirit, Father. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Thank you, Keith. Do a great job. Church, have you ever been in an argument with someone? Never. I know our church never gets in arguments. We are all peacemakers because blessed are the peacemakers. But, you know, have you ever, I've been in an argument. Have you ever been in an argument with someone where you are 100% sure, 100% sure that you are right, that they're wrong and you are right? You've, yeah, raise your hand if you've been in an argument where you are 100% sure. Wow, we've got some holy people here not raising their hands. I'm actually, I feel like a pretty agreeable person. Like I don't get too caught up on being right or anything like that. Uh, But so generally it's kind of not that big of a deal. But there's been one or two times, a couple of times where maybe Danielle and I are having a discussion about something and it's not a fight. It is actually just a discussion and just a small thing. But like she'll say something and I'm like, that's not right. That's not true. And we, this discussion kind of turns into this. And I'm like, what, what, what did you just say? Like, what was that? We kind of go back and forth. And she's like, yeah, this. And I'm like, no. like, da, da. And we kind of go back and forth. And because I am such a humble servant of the Lord, I say, oh, okay, Danielle. Yeah, that, that's right. But I go away and I'm like, no, that's not right. But you know, more than once that has happened where I've gone away as a humble servant of the Lord because I'm a pastor uh, and I go away and then like a few days later, I'll be thinking about it and then all of a sudden it just clicks and I'm like, oh my goodness, Danielle was right and I was wrong. And I definitely call her straight away and say, Danielle, I was wrong, you were right, I apologize. No, that's never happened, has it, Danielle? You know, there's this other time where just recently um, I had some holidays and I booked a last minute trip to Melbourne because I wanted to do something. And so I'm like, let's go to Melbourne. I had a great time, you know, visited some people there. Uh, But then on the trip back, I jumped on the flight. I was in between two people, the worst seat on the plane. You know, you can kind of have the argument of, you know, are you a window seat person or are you an aisle person? If someone ever says they are a middle seat person, they are insane. That is like a red flag, straight away crazy. Like send them to a mental institute right now because like who, like that, that's weird. But I was right in the middle and I was in between these two ladies and you know, they were, they were nice and they gave me the, the armrest because they, our lady has one on her right. She gets that in the space. Window person has that there. So I'm in the middle, I get the two armrests. There we go. And I fly back. And it's like, you know, we, I fly back. I'm a little bit tired. It was actually a pretty packed weekend. And you land, and then usually I stand up just that little bit too early. And if you are, like, not tiny, if you stand up in a plane, you're standing like this. And so I literally stand up from my middle seat, and I'm standing like this for a while, and then I get embarrassed, so I sit back down again, and then we finally get let off the plane. And at this point, I'm, I'm, I'm even more tired, and I'm just like, planes just make me tired for some reason. And I go to the baggage claim, and I'm like, cool, all right, time to get my bag. And you kind of have this collective experience as people on the plane. You've just been on the plane together, now you're waiting for your bags, and then all of a sudden you're going to say goodbye and never see each other again. Uh, but I'm waiting at the baggage claim, and it says, Melbourne, this is the right one. 
and you wait a while, and then all of a sudden, ooh, everyone perks up, because the bags start coming out. It's like, ooh, where's my bag? It's a little bit exciting. It's like, oh, that one, that one looks like mine. Ah, oh, not mine, oh, there we go. You, sometimes, have you ever done the thing where like, you both go for the same one? Oh, no, no, oh, that one's mine, that one's not yours. And you know, just have that bit of a fun experience. You kind of enjoy yourself. And I'm waiting at the baggage claim, and people are starting to grab their bags. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm standing there. And the group's getting smaller and smaller. And all of a sudden, the, the group is getting really small. And we're kind of this group together. And we're like a little bit like, hey, what's going on? Why are, why are our bags not here? And then we're waiting there. It's like, oh, OK, finally, like another group of bags come out. It's like, oh, our bags just must have been last. And so this you know, group of bags start coming out. Someone grabs theirs. Another person grabs theirs. Another person grabs theirs. And then all of a sudden, I realize that I am the last person standing there and there is no one else left. I'm like, oh, there's one more bag coming around. And I look at that bag, and I'm like, oh, that's my bag. But then I see the bag. It was my bag. It was my type of bag. It was exactly the same bag. But this one had a big leather tag on it. It had, like, locks all over it. My bag did not have any of those things. And for whatever reason, I think I was just defeated in that moment. I kind of just watched it go around a few times. And I was, think I was hoping that it would turn into my bag, like, when it came back around. And I keep watching it, I'm like, it's not there. And, you know, at this point, when you land and you get in the airport, you just want to get home. You don't want to mess around. You don't want to do anything. And I was just like, ah, okay. So I go over and I go to, like, the person in behind the desk. And I'm like, hey, I think this is what's happened. That looks like my bag. By the way, by the way, how the heck did this person, my bag has nothing on it. Theirs had locks on every single zip and a big leather tag. And I'm like, did they not look at it? Are they legally blind? I do not know. I thought of all those things that moment. Anyway, I just need to express that. Like, I still don't understand it. And so what happens is they call them up. They call them six times before the person picks up. So luckily on the sixth one, for whatever reason, they thought it was an important call. And then they pick up the phone and they're like, oh, and they're like, oh, they've just gone over the gateway bridge. And so they can turn around. And so I'm like, okay, I guess that's good news. But like, you're waiting there. Everyone else is gone and I'm so tired. And then, you know what? They show up. And I'd actually, um, Danielle had shown up to, at that point to you know, pick me up. And so I'd seen her, so I'd oh, hey, go and talk to her. And that's when the lady dropped it off, a very strategic drop off. She didn't have to say anything to me. I would have been, she was a nice lady. She was very apologetic, but still, get some glasses. Uh, and so then I go and get my bag. It's like, great. It's all over. I got on the flight. I flew down. The flight was even delayed a little bit, I think. I got off the plane. I got my bag eventually. Danielle, let's go. And so we walk out and we start walking. And so Danielle had parked in the, you know, like the 30-minute kind of waiting zone. You can park in there for free for 30 minutes. You know, you can just wait in there kind of thing. She was going to pick me up in the drive-thru, but like this lady had taking my bag and so she couldn't do that and so she parked in the 30 minute one and she walked in I'm like just walk in it'll be fine and then she's like I don't know I don't know if it'll be fine I'm like what do you mean it'll be fine just just park and come in and say like you know I was lonely and so come in and then so we meet I have my bag we're walking out and then so we walk we go up the escalator and then we're walking and then all of a sudden <laughs> we get to the car park and Danielle's just kind of looking like looking around I'm like what where'd you park and she's like I think I parked around here and then we, we walk back, and then we're walking around, and then she tells me, so I can't, right now it sounds like I'm about to just slam Danielle and like make her look bad, but she, I knew it was in the 30 minute park, but I have never actually walked from, like done the walk from the 30 minute park into the airport or back out. I've parked in there and then gone and done a pickup, but I've never done the walk, and so in my mind, I'm just like, it's, I know where it is. It's just there. I can picture it. I'm like, I reckon if I could see through that building, it's right there. I know if I'm looking at Google Maps, we are here, there it is. And so the thing is though, we try, we go here, we go to level one, two, three, four, we try it. And we literally like tried to walk around the car park. Like just, just I've tried to force my way there and trek through everything. Can't get there. Who, like the airport kind of fences and everything like that. And then Danielle starts saying halfway through, it's like, oh, why don't we just go like ask, why don't we just go back and ask? It's like, no, it's just there. Like I know where it is. It's just there. And then she's, and then, okay, okay. She was very like, you know, she's okay. She didn't push it. And then we keep walking around. We go back and we go there. And we go back and we tried the same place like three times hoping that something would change and then we just could not find it and I, like I was so tired at this point I'm so done I'm like I just want to go home I'm hungry I, it's just everything is going wrong and then and then I'm, she's like why don't we ask I'm like no it's just there like can you understand anyone who's done the walk it's just there like it's not that hard to get in between the two places and so I'm just so confused and then eventually you know I'm like okay let's go ask someone 
And then I kind of lag behind and Danielle goes up and asks the person because I didn't want to, I was like, yeah, I know where it is. I don't need to ask where it is. And Danielle goes and asks. And then he's like, oh yeah, just literally like go up there and just walk all the way through. And it literally took us like two minutes to walk to the car. But we're both happy and we're in a stronger relationship because of it. And so it ended up good. But in the same way that I was just like, oh, I know how to get there. It's just there. It's not hard to get there. I know where it is. We don't need to ask for help. I feel like a lot of us, all the time, we can do this with God. We can do this with God where we like, I know how to do it, God. I know how to fix this. I just need to do this. I just need to go from here to there. If I just go one, two, three, step A, B, C, D, I'm going to fix this problem. I'm going to be able to get through this. God, it's okay. I don't need your help. I don't need help with this yet. I can fix it. And we have such control issues for whatever reason. We want to kind of do it ourselves. We know how to do it and we don't necessarily need help. We're so desperate for control over our lives that sometimes we cut ourselves off from the blessing and favor of God. And tonight, I want to let you know that tonight is the night to just give up. Tonight's the night to just give up control. Tonight's the night to just give up any kind of holding back of what you, control of what you want to do in your life. If you're battling a battle, tonight's the night to just give up. It's okay. Just give up the battle. Just, just give up the battle because God can fight our battles for us. God has already won. God can do it like that. What you've been trying to do for the past 20 years can happen like that tonight. And I truly believe that. I've been praying and believing that there's going to be breakthrough tonight in our ministry time, breakthrough of things that have happened for years and years and someone, you know, if it's happened your whole life, you've been fighting the same battle, it can happen like that. If you just give up, if you just surrender to God, because you know what? You can't beat it alone. You cannot. I'm just gonna, you can't win this battle by yourself. But we have a God who has promised us an abundant, fulfilling, free, uh, full of peace, full of courage, full of strength, life. He's promised us so many things um, I think it was Pastor Joe last week was talking about that, you know, God's promised us all of these things. God's love is unconditional, but his promises are conditional. I think that was awesome. Like his love, he's always going to love us. There's no conditions to his love, but his promises aren't all unconditional. We still need to rely on him. Do you know the life that he has for you? Do you know like the amazing life that he has for us as a merged church? If we were a church who just gave up control and just leaned completely on God, do you know what could happen? Like, doesn't that excite you? What could happen in this church? It's already amazing, isn't it? Like tonight, the worship is amazing. There's already something amazing happening in a merged church. Can you imagine if we just surrendered control to God? Oh my goodness, what we would see would be amazing. Do you know when you rely on yourself and make your flesh and your, uh, your strength, you separate yourself from the strength of God. You actually, you can't have it both ways. It's actually one way or the other. You're either choosing to make your flesh, yourself, the strength of your life. You're either relying on yourself and your humanity and your own decisions, or you're relying on the strength of God. And so just think for a moment right now, and I don't want, I'm not coming here to make anyone feel bad tonight. I don't want anyone to leave feeling, you know, bad about themselves. I'm actually coming to let you know that there is a God who can help you through this. And so tonight, you know, are you relying on your own strength or are you relying on the strength of God? In this passage that we just read before, it says that those who trust in humans have turned their hearts away from the Lord. So even if you're not completely away from God, even if you're like, I, I love God, I'm in church, I'm all these things. Even if you are, are pretty much all the way there, if you're trusting more in your flesh and more in yourself than, than in God, the Bible says that you've turned your heart away. And that scares me. I'm like, oh my goodness, I better rely on God because I want my heart to be turned towards God. I would much rather be turned towards God than away from Him. Amen? Amen. You know, in verse 6, it actually continues to say that, People who don't rely on God, who rely on their flesh, they are like stunted shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. They will live in the barren wilderness in an uninhabited, salty land. And so I did a bit of um, uh, research into this. And the shrub that is referenced is, uh, I think the word for it is I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, but ara, ara, A-R-A-R, and it's the ara tree. And it's actually also like very similar, the same word uh, in Hebrew as cursed. And so there's a bit of wordplay going here that this is the cursed tree. This cursed tree, it's also, they called it the cursed lemon or the Sodom apple because it grows in the desert salt lands that surround the Dead Sea and where Sodom and Gomorrah once were. And so this, this shrub, 
this, uh, you know, lemon that they call it, the Sodom apple or the cursed lemon. It grows there in those places. Um, and you know, the, the interesting thing about it, this cursed tree, is that on the outside, apparently it actually looks quite full of life. It actually looks quite, you know, abundant, it looks like a healthy tree, it looks like something that's getting lots and lots of life to it. It looks good on the outside, but if you were going to, if you went and you picked fruit from it, and if you peeled and opened up that fruit, it actually says, and as I was reading, that when you open up the fruit, it actually like makes like a sound, going to release this kind of like gas out of it, and it is hollow, and it's filled with weeds and dust. It looks healthy on the outside, but if you open up that fruit, it's filled with weeds and dust and it's hollow. And this is how so many of us are, you know, if we're relying on ourselves. And I want to go as far as to say that most Christians are probably relying more on themselves than on God these days. I would actually say that because it is really hard to rely on God. It's not a simple thing to do. It's not an easy thing to do. And so tonight, you know, if, if that's you, you, maybe you actually can uh, relate to that tree. You're like, hey, maybe I, I do a good job of making the outside look okay, but really on the inside, I feel hollow. On the inside, I really feel dead. I, I feel like there's not much life there. I look healthy. I look so successful on the outside, but on the inside, my fruit isn't healthy. You know, Jesus speaks about fruit in Matthew 7, 15 to 20, and he says this, he says, Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves. You can identi identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way they act. Can you pick grapes and thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. And so tonight, what does your fruit look like? What's the fruit of your life? What does the fruit of your life look like for the past two years? You know, we went through a very interesting couple of years, but if you do a check of what is the fruit, what has been the fruit, what's been the result of your living for the past few years, is it good fruit? Maybe you look at it and it's like, it actually hasn't been good fruit. And I'll let you to know that, you know, if it hasn't been good fruit, it's okay. That's good. Tonight is the night is to give up control. Tonight's the night to completely lean on God and give Him control of your life. And if you feel like, if you're like, yeah, my, the fruit of my life has been pretty good for the past few years. Hey, I got some great news for you. It's time to give up even more and rely on God even more and see more and more fruit and to change more and more lives and grow the kingdom more and more. There's always more that we can do for God. And for those people who have been killing it lately and doing a great job, hey, Great job to you. You're amazing. God is so happy and, and is like, oh, that person's awesome. But there is still more. Let's not uh, settle with what God is doing. Let's keep pushing for more and more. Amen? Amen. Amen. In uh, Jeremiah 17, verse 7 to 8, it gets to the good part. This is the part that we want to live in. This is where we want to get to because it says, But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. That's the kind of life I want to live. That is the life that I want to live, relying on God, leaning on God, trusting in Him, and receiving the blessings that God has for us. God has blessings waiting for you. I want to let you know there, there is blessings and promises that God has for you. And He is just waiting for you to just run to Him and just to lean on Him and to trust in Him and to just completely give yourself to Him. There's a blessing waiting for you tonight. It says that these type of trees are not bothered by heat or worried by long months of drought. And so, when you're completely leaning on God, when you're relying on Him, when you're giving your life to Him and leaning on Him through your battles and through your trials and through these hard times, you can last that. You can get through these times. You can survive the long months of drought and the hard times when you're leaning on God, when you're trusting in Him. Not only is it their fruit, but if you give up control, you can get through those tough things with Him. You know, God not only, you know, tells us that we're going to be blessed and he's, he's not just saying, hey, trust me and you'll be blessed and then come on, figure out the rest. It's all good. 
God has actually given us tools. God has given us weapons. God has given us things to help us in our battle, to help us in our lives as we go through. There's some tough times. There are some tough things that we need to go through. But he has given us things to be able to fight through. And we've seen it tonight, our worship tonight. That was, there was some warfare happening in our worship tonight. There was some things happening tonight where, you know, hungering after God and we can see breakthrough in those times. But if you don't use what God has given you, I think Pastor Mark uses this a fair bit. If you don't use these tools and these, these weapons, these things that God has given to you, it's like if you're a carpenter and you've been given this job to do, but you're just like, you know what? Today, I feel like I can do it. I don't need my tools. I'm pretty good. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. I think I got it figured out. I'm gonna leave my tools at home and I'm gonna build this thing by myself. Who knows that? You can be the best carpenter in the world and you can do it for your whole life. But if you leave your tools at home, you're not gonna really be able to get much done. Like, I don't know much about carpentry, but I know that. I know that, that's true. And so if you don't access the tools, if you don't access what God has given you, it's just wasting the time that, you know, God is saying, hey, it's here. It doesn't cost anything, it's free. It's right here. It's not gonna cost you anything to be able to use these. And so what, is, what have we been given? We've been given the Holy Spirit, who is our helper, the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter, our advocate, our counselor, our strengthener. Pastor Cam uh, spoke an amazing message this morning here at Warner and at Moorinfield about the Holy Spirit. And it was just a great reminder for me. I was just like, like, yes, that's right. That is who the Holy Spirit is to us. The Holy Spirit is the one that when Jesus uh, left, Jesus himself, our Savior, when he left, he said, it's better that he goes. It's better that Jesus goes so that the Holy Spirit can come. And so are you valuing the Holy Spirit? Are you staying close with the Holy Spirit? Or are you taking the Holy Spirit for advantage? Are you, are you taking it for granted, sorry? Are you kind of just like, oh yeah, on a Sunday or when I really need something? I'll go to the Holy Spirit. Are you going to the Holy Spirit daily? Are you, are you praying in tongues daily? Are you going after God daily? You know, don't take it for granted. Don't take this relationship that we have, this connection we have to God through the Holy Spirit for granted. The Holy Spirit is a gift. The Holy Spirit is a great gift to us and is the answer to so many of our problems. Do you know, probably so many issues that people have could be answered just through the Holy Spirit. I'm gonna read out those things again. The Holy Spirit is our helper, our comforter, our advocate, our counselor, and our strengthener, and, and even more. He, the Holy Spirit is so much to us. And are you accessing all those things that we can find through the Holy Spirit? Or are you taking it for granted and just using it as something you pull out every now and then? God has given us the Holy Spirit. Are you utilizing it? Are you stirring your spirit? Or are you taking it for granted? We also have the Word of God. We have the Bible. You know, are you getting scriptures to take into your battles? If you're struggling through something, or if your family's struggling through something, are you getting scripture and speaking it over your family? Are you speaking it over your life? There are so many great scriptures. And here are some examples right now of just some things that God is our ever present help in times of trouble. God gives us boldness and confidence. God has set us free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So tonight, if you're struggling, if you've been held down by something, there is freedom found in the Lord. Tonight, you can find freedom. There can be breakthrough tonight. In Him, we can be strong and courageous. And in Him, we can resist temptation. Isn't that such a big, big thing for so many people? Just that temptation of sin, temptation of living life the way that the world would want us to live. You know, right in my Bible, it says that we can resist temptation, that there's no temptation that's too big for us to overcome. Through God, you know, if you're struggling, I just feel, to, if you're struggling with temptation, speak that verse over your life every day. Wake up in the morning and speak that. And because then you're gonna start to believe, hey, yeah, there is no temptation that can beat me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Speak those things over your life. Use the weapons that God has given you. If you're not using them, they're just going to waste. If you're not using them, you're coming to God every few Sundays and being like, God, why won't you help me through this? And God's like, use what I've given you. The Holy Spirit's there. My word is there. Use worship. Spend time in, in your bedroom in times of worship. It's just, I, I just over the weekend just put some worship on and there was this one song and I was just putting on a repeat and God was just there in the room and it was just amazing and His Spirit's just there. And do you know what? Through that, all I got was just, just a bit of a rest and, and through that, after that time, I, was, I just felt close with God. I just felt close. When's the last time that you felt close with God? When's the last time that you, you cried in the presence of God? You were moved so emotionally that, that you were led to tears because you know how much God loves you and what He's done for you. If you haven't done that, I encourage you, 
go, seek that. I know that sounds a bit weird. Go after that. Go try to find a place where you are so in love with God, so in that presence of God that you are moved to emotion, moved to tears, that you go after it. And sometimes, you know, we don't want to kind of get stuck in nostalgia, but I actually think sometimes it can be good to put on that worship song that from when you were a teenager, when you're like, those are the glory days of worship. You know, we don't, I don't actually really believe in that. But there's obviously like, it makes sense that in that time where you had that real encounter, go put that on. If there's a song that you cried to when you were a teenager, go put that song on and put it on repeat and just stay in that time and seek God and say, hey, God, I want to go back there. I want to go back to that first love. I want to go to that connection with you. Come on, God has given us tools. God has given us the weapons we need. This week, come on, use them this week. Use them this week. You know, someone in the Bible who had to learn to just completely trust in God and and through his battle, his actual physical battle, he needed to rely on God is Gideon. And if we look at the story of Gideon, he was a man who was chosen by God to fight for his people, to uh, take uh, the land back, to, to fight back in a time. They'd been oppressed for so long and, you know, their, their crops and everything were getting taken and destroyed and they were just really getting oppressed in that time. And so God chooses Gideon to be the man who leads the army into battle to be able to free his people. And Gideon, if you know the story, you know that when God comes to and asks him, he says, God, I can't do it. I can't do it, God. You know, I'm of the smallest tribe. And then I'm almost, I'm the smallest of all the people in my tribe as well. Like, I'm the last person. He's like, you've got the wrong person, God. You've got the wrong person. And so then God basically, over a series of ways to, to prove to Gideon that it's like, no, I'm actually, I want you to do it. I want you to do it. Multiple tests and different things. Gideon's like, okay, okay. I can see that you want me to do it. And so he gathers his army. And it says in the Bible that he gathers, and there's an army of 22,000. That's a lot of people. And so there's this army there, and then they get all those people together. And then God's like, you know what? It's too big. The army's too big, Gideon. And Gideon's like, what the heck? It's, it's, it's what, what, am I, what do you mean it's too big? Don't you want more people? Don't you want us to win? And so he's like, no, it's too big. And so it gets cut from 22,000 to 10,000. Over half of it gets cut. So Gideon's sweating a little right now. Like all the people are probably asking him why. Like when, like, you know, he's feeling that pressure of being a leader. And he's like, oh, it's like, why did you do that? That makes no sense. We're going to lose now. And he's just like, okay, God, you know, I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you. And then God says, still too big. It's still too big. 10,000 is too many. And so then, so through this process, it gets cut down to 300 men, 300 warriors it gets cut down to. It's gone from 22,000 to 300. Do you know how crazy that would have felt? Do you know how much pressure he would have been under from all the people around him? It's like, what, how, why are we going with 300? But God gives him a strategy. And Gideon, although through lots of tests and asking God to show him that it was him, Gideon trusts in the Lord. And through something that would have seemed so crazy, through human vision, through human perspective, it would have seemed insane. It would have made no sense. It wouldn't have made any sense at all. They take these 300 men in and, you know, they blow their horns and they smash their clay pots and all of a sudden God comes into that situation and he causes confusion and all of a sudden they win the battle with only 300 men. The battle that they were never meant to win, the battle that made no sense at all for them to win, human perspective, just like, no, we're not gonna win, we're all gonna die, we can never win this battle. God intervened and they found their victory. And you know what? Leaning on God, trusting in God so often is going to look like that. It's like, God, that doesn't make sense. That's not how it works. We need to take the 22,000 in. But some of you have been trying to take the 22,000 in for the past 20 years and it still hasn't worked. And God's just saying, come on, just listen to what I'm saying. Cut down, cut down. God, just, just listen to what I'm saying and we're going to find the victory. In Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Do not lean on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Can the band join me up on stage? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. Do you know how hard that is? (laughs) Do you know how much we want to lean on our own understanding? Every single day, every second of every single day, it is 
against human nature to not lean on our own understanding, to not depend on our own understanding. It is crazy to our flesh, to our bodies, to us to like, no, why would you do that? Why would you do that? But we do that because we know the plans that God has for us, because we know what God promises us. We know what's on the other side. Even when our mind is telling us no, we need to have faith in the Lord and believe that He is gonna bring us out the other side victorious in this battle. And so tonight, like I've been saying, I really believe that if you've been fighting a battle in your life, uh, and I believe there's people who've been fighting battles for a long, long time. Everyone, everyone's fighting something. Everyone's fighting something. It might have just been something today. You might just be in a bad new, a mood. You might have been fighting something for years. There might have been something that you feel like was passed on from your parents, and you're like, it wasn't my fault, but the way my parents raised me, you know, the way my grandparents raised them, you know, this has been a generational thing. Tonight, we can see breakthrough. Tonight, when we lean on God, when we give Him all of our hearts, when we give Him all of us, we can see a breakthrough in this place. Amen? Do you believe that? Come on, church, do you believe that tonight we can see a breakthrough in our lives, that we can see battles won in this place, that we can see addictions broken, that we can see chains broken off people's lives. Tonight, we can see a breakthrough. And I so firmly believe that. I know it. I know that it's true. But you need to let go. You need to give up control. Do you know how many times I've seen people struggling with something? And you can, like, physically, they're, like, it's in their hearts, in their spirit, but it's, you can almost see that they're physically struggling. And the second they let go, maybe, maybe they think they've let go, but then when they really let go, that's when the breakthrough comes. Do you know, in my life, the amount of times where I've been fighting with something and I think I've let go, but then God just works in my heart. God just does a bit of surgery on my heart. And then all of a sudden, okay, now I've let it go. And all of a sudden the breakthrough comes. The breakthrough comes. And so come on right now, would you close your eyes? Let's just think right now, what battle are you fighting right now? Whether it's something that you fought your whole life, whether it's something just recent, everyone, everyone is going through something. Everyone's fighting a battle. Tonight, I promise you, if you give up control, if you, you give it all to God, if you surrender it all, if you seek Him, you'll find Him. You can see victory tonight. You can see victory this week. And I want to I want to say that if you don't find your victory tonight, don't give up. Use those tools, use those weapons. But what is it that you're facing tonight? What is it that you want to see broken off your life tonight? 